What is going on guys? So, I was actually supposed to upload a video this morning. That would have put me on schedule for an upload every other day, but I decided to take the day off. Yo, dude, what's up? What's going on, dude? I'm shooting a video right now. Um, are you shooting a vlog, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're shooting a color grading video. Wait, what? No, like, you can't do your vlog today. You have to do a color grading video. Well, dude, I mean... No, 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 don't, don't try to argue this, alright? Color grading video right now. Whatever you say, man. So I guess I'm doing a video on color grading. Like I was saying, yesterday was actually my birthday. Um, I turned 20. So, did some stuff with my friends and just kind of like, had the day to actually celebrate and relax a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'm teaching you guys how to color grade today. Alright guys, so before we hop into this full disclaimer, I am by no means a professional colorist, so take this with a grain of salt. Um, I'm still learning just as much as you guys are. I'm getting better and better at it, but here's my take on it. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is why color grading is important. Uh, color grading plays a huge, huge part in conveying the emotions and the mood that the director intended for the audience. There's a few things that go into that, camera movement, sound, lighting, but color grading is among one of the more important. I want to show you guys a couple examples of some of my favorite movies and kind of break down some of the color in them and why it was used. The first of which here, Sherlock Holmes. The colors used in this particular scene, you'll find that in the shadows, there's these deep green and brown tones. And then sort of the skin tones, the oranges and the yellows and the reds are somewhat subtle and muted. It gives it this sort of deep and dirty feel as you'll notice there in this barn bar place. Another example of a very classic color grade is The Matrix. While they're in the Matrix, they give it this very intense green look, which adds this very sort of otherworldly-like foreign feel. Again, goes to show how colors can very much so portray an emotion or mood that the director intended. Back to something a little bit more subtle, The Weeknd's new music video for Starboy, the director utilizes something a bit more classic with the teal shadows and orange highlights. This is used across many and many films. If you go and watch a couple right now, you'll probably find it. It's a little bit more exaggerated in this music video scenario to kind of portray this deep and dark mood, but still, it's a very classic color grade that's used in so, so, so many films. Over on F-Stoppers, there's an article written by David Geffen um, titled The Power of Color Grading and the Benefit It Can Have on Your Work, summarized in two minutes. Um, it's a fairly short read and there's an example video. Definitely go check that out. Now, there's something that people get confused about fairly often, so I want to clarify that. There is color grading as well as color correcting. Um, two very different things and do not confuse them. There's a great article written by Justin Troyer over on Ohio State University's website going very in depth as to the differences between color grading and color correcting, um, but let me give you a little summary here. Color correction is the process of going through and matching each individual clip in a sequence to have the same characteristics. So that means white balance, highlights, shadows, exposure, contrast, etc. Uh, to get them to look consistent throughout the sequence. Color grading is actually where you get to add in your colors and really stylize it to convey the emotion or mood that you want to show. All right, so what you're looking at here is the beginning sequence that you guys actually saw in the beginning of this video here. Um, and if you remember, there was just a couple examples I had of some different color grades. So let's go ahead and jump into a secondary sequence here with the raw clips and go ahead and start from scratch. So generally, the way I like to color grade is utilizing adjustment layers. Now, if you're in a different pro editing program such as Final Cut, this may be a bit different for you, but the same principles that we're gonna get into here are all going to be universal. I use adjustment layers for a process called non-destructive editing. Essentially, if there became an issue with one of the color grades that you did, you wouldn't have to go back and sort of hunt it down in the raw clip itself. All the adjustments you're doing, as hence the name adjustment layer, are generally going to be over the top. So you can go in and turn them on and off and sort of see the before and after very easily. It just makes it a little bit more of an easy sort of paper trail to go back and find a mistake or change something. Let's go ahead and stretch out this adjustment layer throughout the length of the clip. 
So if you have the newest version of Premiere Pro, which I hope you would, uh, CC, I think it's 2017. I think 2015 had it as well, but there's all these tabs up here. So go ahead and click to the color tab, which I'm already in. And this is gonna pull up Lumetri color panel on the right hand side here for just ready to go adjustments. Go ahead and click on that adjustment layer. And then we're gonna start with basic correction. So generally we can work down the list here. We can start with white balance, which if your white balance is off, you can correct for that to some extent. So if we wanted to take and warm the clip up a little bit, cool it down, moving down, we have the tone control. So generally with the way I like to start is with contrast. My footage, the way I shoot it, ends up being very flat out of camera, meaning it doesn't have much contrast to it. So I'll go ahead and bump that up. Looking pretty good right around maybe 40 or so. Now, after I add the contrast, that'll give me a better idea of where my clip's exposure is at. So based on that, I can adjust the exposure if needed. We can move down to highlights, bring those up or down, kind of depending on the way I want it to look. Shadows, I'm gonna pull them down a little bit just to add even more contrast, but in a different way. Whites can also sort of play a role in how your highlights appear. Bring those down just a little bit to get more detail in that window. And then the blacks will take and bring those up or down, usually down. It's called crushing the blacks. It's a very classic cinematic term. It just makes the blacks and the sort of the darkest areas of the image look closer to true black. And the next thing I'll do is adjust saturation. Again, my footage is very flat out of camera. So not only does the footage not have enough contrast, but usually it's fairly flat in terms of saturation as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that saturation up to like 120. Again, all these adjustments are really going to take practice. So play with them and get the feel for them. Uh, there's not really a right or wrong way. The next little panel we have available to us is creative. Now. Premiere Pro and Lumetri's color panel has these built in what they call looks. And these are sort of like filters that you can apply over the top of your footage, just a quick way to achieve sort of a dramatic look. Um, I use these from time to time, but usually I'll take and do all my color grading freehand just because I really like to dial in my own personal look. So I usually skip over the creative panel. The next thing we have available to us is curves. Now this is definitely not something I feel as though I can explain very well, at least in this video, it might take a little bit more time. You can, you guys can play around with that a little bit on your own and kind of get the idea. Basically, it's another way to control sort of all those adjustments we did at the very beginning, um, just a little bit more uh, in depth and sort of freehand. Now, color wheels, this is my favorite part. This is where you really get to add sort of your own flair onto your footage, just like what we talked about in some of those examples from my favorite movies. I'm gonna go ahead and take and go for the classic sort of teal and orange look in this particular shot. So usually what I'll take and start out with is the shadows wheel here. I'll take and move that towards the blue and sort of teal area, begin to add this sort of cool blue look in the shadows. Now, because we sort of cooled down the shadows, this has cooled down almost the entire image, which affected our, my skin tones here. So I'm gonna grab the mid tones, which is primarily where skin tones are gonna be, and pull those closer to sort of orange. Usually you're not gonna be able to pull back all skin tones simply with mid-tones. And the reason for that is there's a little bit of highlight tones also that affect skin tones. I'm saying tones a lot. So we're gonna grab the highlight color wheel here and also push those towards orange. And this will also, you'll notice, is going to begin to affect the sort of window and window seal area. Now, after doing that adjustment with the mid-tones and the highlights, pushing more towards those oranges, our blues and teals in the shadows that I was going for kinda got doled down. So I'm gonna bring those even further down. So that's already looking pretty damn good. Didn't take too long. Let me show you a full before and after. Now, this is by no means a like proper way to do this. This is kind of a very like just crash course run through on how to color grade a shot um, using some basic principles. So that's about it, to be honest. So let me recap this for you guys. Color grading is extremely important, especially if you're gonna get into more short film cinematic type stuff. It is an extremely important thing to begin learning and practicing in order to make your content better. Cause like I said, there's a few parts that go into getting across what you want the audience to see. Um, and color grading is a big, big part of that. Take and practice with it. It is definitely not something you're gonna get good with within like a day or two. It takes time. I mean, I'm still not even gonna consider myself like a good color grader. Like I, I know what I'm doing for the most part, but by no means do I really think I'm like great with it. I'm still learning. So go out and shoot more guys. 
get to practicing, start messing around with as much stuff as you can in, in your editing, uh, color grading, and just have fun with it. Because in reality, there's no real right or wrong to how to color grade. You know, films like The Matrix pushed it a very, very dramatic direction with that crazy green look. I mean, you can realistically do anything you want with this and really sort of get any idea or any look you have in your head out to the world. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If there was something I did that you want to see a little bit more in depth, comment down below. Um, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps a lot and it is my, well, was my birthday. So that'd be really cool if you guys could do that for me. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon.